evil eye. Is it real or is it just a myth for people to sell little trinkets? In Islam, we believe that evil eye is real. We in Arabic call it al-nazar or al ain Even in other languages and cultures, they also call it nazar. It's when there's envy. If you're looking with your eye about what someone else has and you're envious of them. You're jealous. It's that feeling, that toxic energy is real. And it can cause a lot of issues in life and in the real physical realm here in this world. Again, it is a spiritual concept, but it can have effect in the physical realm, in the physical world. It's a malevolent gaze of other people that can cause misfortune in your life. And you can also cause evil eye to yourself. Well, you look at yourself and you jinx yourself, right? I'm so good at this, I'm so this, I'm so that. And then look what happens after. And a silly example of this is, say you're, you and a girl are starting talking, you're interacting, you and a guy, you're talking, you're, oh, like, they like me, huh? I'm so excited. And you tell your friend, they tell you this person, this person. And then boom, what happens? You look like a fool five weeks later. And why? Because you talked about it too much. You, you were inviting that, that evil eye. You could have even caused it to yourself. And again, it happens all the time in our world and in our society. What are ways that you can get rid of it? And what are ways you can protect yourself from the evil eye? First and foremost, everyone knows that little blue talisman or that little trinket that people say, oh, this protects me from the evil eye, right? It doesn't do anything. And in Islam, it's actually seen as haram to even have one of those because it's seen as shirk, associating partners with God. The only person, the only thing that can protect you from these things is God, right? All reliance upon God, not some trinket that you got in a $2 mall. No, you want to make sure that you trust upon Allah to keep you away from al hasad, al ain, and al nazar. In Islamic tradition, it's super real. We believe in it. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, warned us about it. And Surah Al Falak in the Quran and Surah Al Nas are two different surahs that basically talk about this and will protect you from al hasad, al ain envious people, people who are looking at you with the eye, right? And it's not something, for example, that don't even share about what you're doing or getting into or talking to people. No, it's not that. But understand that you can't communicate with just everybody. You have to understand that you have to be humble. Understand that people are going to look at the blessings you have and envy you and want it as well. So as much as you can, have a spiritual connection with God so that God can protect you from the hasad and the ain that other people will in turn put upon you. It's an energy. It's a negative energy. People who are envious are operating in a low vibrational state. They're envious. They're greedy. They want what you have. But again, you have to be someone as well who isn't envious of others and only focuses on themselves, focuses on what they can get done, isn't envious of others, and is humble and not arrogant. Also, when it comes down to social media, people love posting brand new wit. Look at me. I got all this jewelry. I got all the flex. Look at this. Look at that. Look at my lifestyle. But again, doing all that's only going to create that envious environment. So understand that you can talk about, hey, I had this thing. I'm posting a video. Please, guys, enjoy it. Watch it. That's a lot different than, yo, everybody, this is me. I'm that guy. Look at me. But that's not the right energy you should have. People are going to look at that and you're creating this toxic energy, this toxic environment. That's why, again, when you look at different reality TV shows, what do they ask for? They're asking for toxicity. They're asking for that negative energy. But that's what they feed off of. But that's, again... You don't want that, then don't create it yourself in your own experience. Some of the symptoms of evil eye are things like sudden misfortune, illness, bad health. These are different things that can happen in so many different ways. Say someone was flexing their car, brand new car, brand new car, brand new car, two weeks later gets into a car accident. Or says, I'm the best driver in the world, I'm the best driver in the world, boom, gets into a car accident. Again, you have to understand, you can bring it on to yourself, but also when you put it out in the world, you're, you can bring out a lot of negative energy by being this way. And understanding that using du'a and supplication and asking Allah to protect you from the evil eye, reciting Surah Al-Falaq, Surah Al-Nas, there are ways that you can help mitigate this evil eye to happen to you in your life. Lastly, be very cautious about who you're telling your things to. Don't share your business to everyone. Make sure you're protecting your blessings and protecting your barakah. Because if Allah has blessed you with something, first and foremost, be humble. Accept it from Allah. Know that Allah has granted you that barakah, not you and your own traits. You didn't make the thing yourself. It was through Allah that you got it. And a good example is in Surah Al-Kaf, we always read it every Friday. What does it talk about? It talks about the guy who says, my garden will never wither away. And even if it were to, God will probably give me something better. And he was being arrogant and cocky with his wealth and his sons and everything to his neighbor. Then what happens? Thunderstorm and all the flood came and destroyed his land, right? And then what did he say? Oh, if only I didn't take partners with Allah. If, oh, if only I was hum basically humble. He caused that envy to himself. He was arrogant. He was saying that, oh, I'm, I'm the goat. I'm the greatest. I have all these things, blah, 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 blah. 
But again, that is where that comes from. So again, make sure that if you have blessings or if you see someone else with blessings, mashallah, alhamdulillah, Allah akbar. Don't be envious. Don't share in that energy. Remember, it's a toxic, toxic thing to be part of. So make sure that you're constantly grateful and express gratitude for what you have. And when you get blessings and barakah, be sure to thank Allah for those blessings and barakah and not your own ego. Thank you guys again for tuning in to another episode here where, again, I talk about different things in Islam and different things spiritually. I love talking about this kind of stuff and it's something that I love talking about because it's real. It's passion. It's something that has been part of my life for so long. I love talking about it and sharing it. Please leave in the comments down below of different ways that you guys found to remove hassad from your life or things that have worked to basically being more gracious, having more gratitude. And if you have a story about ways where Nazar has happened and you learned from it, please share it in the comments down below so people can learn from it as well. And again, that's the whole thing about building a community of people who want to learn, who are curious. Because again, that's what gets us going. That's what gets the conversation going in the right direction. Thank you guys again for liking, subscribing, and being up to date with the videos. And inshallah, I'll see you guys next week. See you later.